Well, today's May 22nd, 2011, um, and just like Pastor Dow told you a long, long time ago, months ago, when I first got wind of this story, there will be no rapture of the church before the Great Tribulation. And let me tell you all something. Listen to me very closely. I'm a Hebrew, and I'm an Israelite. So therefore, I have an understanding of timing. You can throw away all this Christian stuff. You can forget it because it's all false, every bit of it. Um, Amos 3, 7 says, surely the Lord God would do nothing but he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. And he hadn't told me anything. And I know that I'm living holy, a separated and clean life. Um, and as well as the people of the Most High Yah here at Straightway, we know that for sure. And because the Most High always gives his people warning before he does something. So let me tell you something, um, every last one of you, so you can get through your heads. All these people who call themselves the prophets from a Christian perspective, the prophets of Israel don't come from Christianity, and it will not come from Christianity. So you have all these people prophesying, prophet lying, deceiving you, um, overthrowing your faith, making your faith shipwrecked. I preached a message yesterday on Sabbath um, for about maybe 30 minutes, somewhere along in there, 30, 35 minutes. Um, and I think you need to listen to it. I'm not so much concerned about um, this false prophet called Harold Captain, who made this particular prophecy. He's already done, gone off into obscurity. Uh, nobody ever listened to him again. As a matter of fact, um, in the old covenant, um, Israel, uh, the book of remembrance, you know what Israel used to do whenever it was false prophets like that? They would take him outside the gate and they would stone him. Um, I guarantee if we had that same type of law enacted today, that all these people who call themselves prophets or prophetesses, is it, after Israel get finished stoning a bunch of them, there will be less false prophecies taking place. And that's just the truth. But the enemy is working here at the end time to deceive the masses of the people. And of course, he has to raise them up. That's why I keep telling you people over and over, and over again um, that Christianity is not the way. We are part of the remnant. We are part of the elect here straightway. The, the, the set apart, the chosen. Um, so therefore, we have an understanding of his times and his seasons. Uh, it's not going to come from any Christian perspective because Christ was not a Christian. None of the apostles were Christian. None of the prophets were Christian. Christianity is a religion that has hijacked the faith of the ancient Hebrew Israelites. You've got to get that through your head so you can understand what's going on today. I understand how painful it is to hear, but yet and still, it's still the truth. So what I want you to do is, is stay tuned here just for a second. Now, my concern is, and that's the reason for this video right here, it's not so much for the false prophet. He's gone. He's finished. He's done for. Um, what, what my concern is, is, is all the mockers and the scoffers. So this is a message right here so that you can make sure um, that you don't fall into this category right here um, because it needs to be said. So I hope that you would enjoy this video, pass it on to as many people as you can, and I hope that you get some type of spiritual uh, revelation, discernment, and education from the true word of the Most High Yah, uh, preached from a true pastor, called, according to Jeremiah 3.15, uh, just like the scripture says. The King is coming. Be encouraged. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. We're dealing with an ignorant generation. Now, let me define the word ignorance here just for a moment. When I say that we're dealing with an ignorant generation, I'm talking about a generation that don't know what y'all. Because in their perspective, professions, they know them. You understand what I mean? They know the God of commerce. Are y'all listening? Tell me, they know about the God that would help 
make the function of this world go around, but when it comes to actually knowing the most high himself, people are ignorant of him. If you mention the word mockers and scoffers, this false prediction of the rapture that's allegedly supposed to take place today, this is one way to bring them out. And y'all got to listen to me real close, see, because you can tell that the world, neither the believers in Messiah, really truly believe that he's actually coming. But it is amazing at how many people took note and their attention was drawn to this false prophecy that even the secular world took notice of it. We know that the world does not believe that Christ is coming. But even more so, we know that the so-called church, they don't believe that he's coming. And if you don't believe me, how many of you have actually turned away from your sin? That's how I know that people don't believe he's coming. Hmm? I'm sure that many, many people went through their little secret form of penance. You know, that they call Repentance. And because the, the majority of the people in this world has been deceived <clears throat> by the religion of Christianity, people think that they can utter a few words and then be granted admission into glory after living a lifetime in opposition and rejection to Christ. That's what this philosophy does up today. And it's still in some of you. Sitting right here, the remnant. Because there was a lot of people worldwide that has taken note of this particular day. And like I said, hey, the mockers and scoffers, they came out. Hmm? I don't mock and I don't scoff. I just flat out tell the truth. He ain't coming. But the book tells us the fabric of this world and the way it's going to be before it's coming. And as I was out driving yesterday, I, I was convinced that the world did not believe that Christ is coming. And the believers, they don't believe that Christ is coming because nothing has changed about your pathetic life whatsoever at all. Nothing. So you see how many hypocrites there are. There's plenty of them. Because I guarantee you that if people are sitting around, waiting around for the rapture, whether they believe it or not, if they did do some penance that they call repentance, tomorrow morning they'll go right back and pick up their sinful lifestyle. Peter told us clearly what the condition of this world was going to be like before of the coming of the king. Brother, it gets second Peter. It's important that we know this. Because one of the first things that Kepler told us was, first thing, he says, knowing this first. Now, when you get, yeah, if you know something first, then that means second don't come before first. Is that all right? In other words, I want you to pay attention to something. First. First. That's why you people got to come out of these false religions. 
The Messiah did not come to give us religion. The Most High did not reveal himself to Abraham to give us religion. He gave our people laws, statutes, and commandments. Are you not amazed today at how that people will put more fear to a secular law made by man? They're conscious of it. They're intrinsically aware that if they're traveling down the highway and they may have a moment's lapse of time and realize for a moment that they're doing 83 or 84 when they should be doing 7. But the reality of them breaking a law does not quicken their spirits until they see a state trooper sitting on the side, then all of a sudden they sober up. Ha, 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 ha. Keenly aware of man's law and the fear of man. Then the Most High raises up men of Yah to tell us what time it is and nonchalantly like a bunch of children in the playground. We hear the voice, we hear the call, but we ignore because we still want to play. We got something more important to do. And when we start echoing the laws of the Most High, the statutes and the commandments, nobody pays attention. You know why? Because we're not under that law. And that type of mindset is clear in the scriptures. When you are no longer under any law, that makes you a person that is not lawful. And if you're not lawful, that makes you a worker of iniquity. And a worker of iniquity is somebody who is lawless. And that's what the religion of Christianity has done. It has produced the seed of lawlessness. And some of us still got some of that mess germinating even till now. We fear man more than we do the Father. We're ready. We get quickened when we see another man, especially if it's something that's going to hit us in our pocketbook. Keenly aware of this fleshly life while we do nothing for eternal life. So the nation is not without its set of hypocrites, is it? You watch and see how many people live holy from this day. And you watch to see how many people's faith is going to be made shipwrecked and be overthrown. Now you think you've seen a fall away right now. You ain't seen nothing yet when they find out the man of sin is going to show up before the Messiah. And when they hadn't been raptured up out here like their lying dog pr false prophets have told them. And this man of sin starts doing all these lying wonders and signs. <clears throat> They're going to quickly DX the most high and say there ain't no God but him because even now we practice our lives in fear of man as opposed to the fear of the most high y'all. We're more afraid of what's going to happen to our flesh than what's going to happen to our soul. So since we've already have practiced this behavior and it's in our very structure. We don't know how to fear. Yeah. I mean Ecclesiastes 12, 13 tell us, for let us hear the conclusion. You know what conclusion means, right? That means the end of the whole matter. That means even when the Most High said, in the beginning, y'all created the heaven and the earth. There was a conclusion. Because he declares the end from the beginning. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear, y'all. And who do you fear? I tell you, you fear. You fear a ticket.
You fear warrantless searches and seizures. You fear losing your job that you call your livelihood. And the Bible teaches that the fear of man bringeth a snare. Mm. See, a lot of times we think we know the book until we hear somebody else talking and all of a sudden we figure out, man, I don't know it like I thought I did. Because religion has taught us to grandstand. It has taught us to stage play. You know, put on. I mean, it, if anybody want to look religious, can't nobody beat us. You ever seen how religious folks dress? With all these different religions of the world, surely somebody got to have it. There's one thing about religion and worldliness. There's always a distinction in dress between those who are seeking a higher consciousness or what they call a higher power or a higher way. The world remains the same. But Kepler told us, and see that's the reason why we need to always put in memory what the apostles and prophets told us. Now what these false prophets have told us today. You get people out here in this secular Christianity that go up, let me prophesy to you. You ain't prophesying to me nothing. Get out of my face. Let me prophesy to you. I'm going to take his hand. I'm going to put it right across your face. <laughs> this generation don't have an idea what a prophet is. That's the truth. Because... If they ever saw a prophet, I guarantee you wouldn't go running to him. I mean, we have something that kind of insulate a little bit, kind of bring a little healing bomb, a little salve today. They're called pastors. And we even take off, run, and hide from them. And if you can't handle a real true y'all called pastor, you forget about a prophet. You can forget it. You people think you ready for a lot to come? You think you're ready for the two witnesses? The last thing you want to see is the two witnesses up on this earth while you're still living in your sin. Because they're going to do more than call you out. Let's see how Peter's ahead of his time. Starting at verse 3, brother Ed, come on with the thunder. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, mm -hmm. through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby we are given, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. That are by you in 2 Peter or 1 Peter, brother? 2 Peter. Are you sure? There is chapter not. 3? No, you didn't talk about chapter. I'm sorry. You just started at the first, didn't you? Yes, sir. We'd have got there sooner or later. We would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 3, verse, verse 3. I thought you'd have picked up on my spirit and, and right when I first started quoting it. Well, you, see, you quoted chapter uh, verse 20, knowing this first. Well, oh, well, let's go see what Chapter Second Peter chapter 3, verse 3 says. All right. Knowing this first, that there shall come the last day. Scoffers. What, I, what, I, what I've been talking about. Scoffers. So the first thing is going to come in the last what? Days. Days is what? Scoffers. If anything, what has happened about this false prophecy, it flushed out all the scoffers. See, most people don't think like this. It, I mean, it flushed them out. You watch to see how many people are going to make that. They're going to make th th this false prophecy the text of their sermon on pagan Sun God, raw Sunday. Right. Mm -hmm. And you people are already in direct opposition against the Most High just even by putting your footprint and your allegiance in those temples of Dagon. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Nowhere in the book tell you to go rest on Sunday Amen. or no first day. Where well, you come up with that nonsense? Aren't you not amazed at the behavior we have? We've been lied to. We've been deceived all of our life. 
When somebody come and tell you the truth, all of a sudden, we got to get the magnifying glass out, get the water board out, get the torture chamber ready. Let's put you to, how in the world are you going to know how to test them since you didn't know how to test a lie? How are you going to know how to try them since you didn't know how to try a lie? What hypocrites we are. Just flat out hypocrites. And you think a voice like this is popular in his end days? Just, just to the remnant. Only his sheep will hear his voice. See, you're listening. You see a silhouette up here of me. The earth suit I have on loan. But the voice that is coming out of this silhouette, it don't belong to me. Amen. Belongs to the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's his word. He's the one that's doing the drawing. If you're drawn to any man, you're going to go to hell with man. Christ said, if I be lifted up, not me be lifted up. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. That's what he said. And if anybody getting up and have some form of what they call preaching and teaching, and you're being drawn to a man, then you're going to go to the same hell with that man. I mean, I thought you, you should not have no other gods before me. That includes man too, right? Oh, hallelujah. Is that right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So you may hear me, but the idea is, is you follow me as I. See the prerequisites? Prerequisites. As I follow. And there are a lot of false prophets that's going on in the world. You look at these churches out here today, most of them are following personalities. I don't have the type of personality that people want to follow. <laughs> No, because you don't never know when, when, when the rebuke is coming. The sword is coming. It'll be right. You may not like it, but it will be right. Look at him looking. Isn't it true? So it's his Ruach Kadesh that draws us. Again, Brother Ed, knowing this first, that what? There shall come in the last days scoffers. What they going to do? Walking after their own lust. Is this not what this whole world built upon? Is how to get everything for your lust. How to consume everything on your own lust. How to live for your lust. So much so for you, you ain't got time for Christ. Yes. See, that's a scoffer. That's mocker. You've had even secular radio stations. I, went, I, would, I would change from one to another. And they were all talking about today. Every one of them. But they were mocking. And then they'll put these snake dancing Sunday preachers up there who's supposed to be some type of a scholarly authority. They put these pigs and swine up there and, and these people don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. You know they're not going to put me on their radio program. <laughs> See, because why they want to put focus on the false prophecy, I want to put focus on your yeah. life. I'm telling you right now that people, they were, I guarantee, they, can, hey, can you imagine? How many people probably went to bed last night before midnight and, and said a prayer and think they're automatically supposed to get the mission, in mission into heaven? <laughs> well, the king said, I'm going to mock you in your day of claiming. When your fear come up on you, I'm going to mock you. Your distress come up on you, I'm going to mock you. Your anguish come up on you, I'm going to mock you. You didn't want to hear me all this time, so guess what? I'm not going to hear you. Live a life of sin, iniquity, and transgression. No holiness, no righteousness, no obedience, no sanctification. And then you want to go right up into a pure, clean, holy place. Now you're not taking your stinking, nasty tail into a holy, sanctified, pure, sin-free sin -free place. You better get the sin out of you right now. You better get yourself prepared right now. And you better move with fear right now. Amen. While you worried about when is the Lord coming or when the tribulation is going to be, you could die tomorrow. His visitation came on you quick. See, this is, this is, this is what you call a modern day defibrillator. That's the reason why people don't like preachers. 
It ain't that people hate me as a person. They just don't like what I got to say. Because what I got to say, it ain't Russ Limbaugh. It's not John Hagee. It's not these, these damnable missionary Baptist preachers up here. What I got to say, it's going to penetrate. It's going to cut, going to get to the quick. Is that what they call them must on getting straight to the quick? What you're going to hear is the unadulterated, the uncompromised, the word, the same word that made heaven and earth. So don't you sit up here and Mr. Rogers make believe land acting like that everybody love the king. No, they don't. They love themselves. And that's why Kepler told us right here, knowing this first. Tackle your principal thing. Couldn't even get past all that until you get past this. That's right. You got to bring this out. Now let's see what they're going to say. What, what's going on right now? Y'all want to say, see how this time frame fits? Go ahead, brother. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? All right. There it is, is it not? Are we not here? Where is the promise of his coming? You know, look how many people going to mock tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Where's that? Read on. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from we the beginning of the about creation. This. We hear it all the time. We hear it all the time. Watch what he also going to put us in memory of, just like Christ did. Read on. For this they willingly are ignorant of. Willingly ignorant. You hear this? Willingly ignorant. Willingly ignorant. Dumb on purpose. Read on. That by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Now you know what that was, right? They're standing out of water and in the water. Read on. Whereby the world that then was, being overflow of water, perished. Oh, being overflow of water. So he's taking us all the way back to the time of Noah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Isn't that something? Huh? See, that's the one thing about the apostles. They did not forget what was written in the Amen. Torah and the Tanakh. And we have this philosophy today tell you, you don't have to, we're not under that. You throw it all away. And every time they talk, they put us in memory yep. of what the Torah said. Read on, Brother Ed. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. Uh, the, ooh, come on. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment. Whoa! The heavens and earth are reserved unto what? Fire. fire. So what he's clearly telling, see, that was a time that the earth was destroyed by water. Mm -hmm. And he put his bow in the sky. Yes. And he promised that all flesh would not be destroyed by a flood again. Mm -hmm. And when, course, when you see these big gigantic tsunamis taking place, wiping out coastlines and going way inward and, and just causing devastation and sweeping people out to sea, it makes you think, my God, man, it's getting ready to flood again. And people are fearful of flood. What you better be fearful of is the fire. Yeah. 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 They got water because the world was so wicked. We get fire. You know the reason why we get fire? Because we're more wicked than the old world has ever been. And the reason why that the Most High has to burn this thing up because he cannot allow this earth and the people in it to stay in their present state or condition. Fire is what purges. Yes. And so since people are not working on purging themselves, he's got to bring the fire. Why do you think that the baptism of the Holy Spirit always has to do with fire? Mm -hmm. I don't understand this Holy Ghost that people say they got today. They won't lead them to keep his commandments. They will not lead Amen. them and cause them to be holy. They won't lead them to be sanctified and set apart. I don't understand that kind of Holy Spirit. My Holy Ghost won't let me get away with nothing. Amen. Nothing. I get reproved at the slightest little thing, even if a thought goes awry. Go. So I got a question this Holy Spirit you people say you got. Because I promise one thing, you ain't got it. No, you don't either. Right. You ain't got it. Because the one thing that the Holy Ghost does is he 
reproves. He convicts the world of sin. Amen. Look at him looking at me. So why you people want to mock at this Harold Camping guy making this false prophecy, you notice the focus uh, here this morning is not on him, it's on you. See, everybody want to make a clown out of him. I want to make a clown out of this wicked church. Because many of you going to find, they've been better for some of you have never even been born. And that's just the truth. Used to be a time, a long, long time ago, that the old folks go to church, and this was all the sermon they would hear was a hellfire brimstone. Today we hear self help to a better you. <laughs> How to name it and claim it. Your ship gonna come in. Sow a seed. You ain't going to hear that from me. No, you ain't. You ain't going to hear from no, no preachers and teachers from this pulpit. You're going to get the truth. It's going to be the truth straightway. Read on, Brother Ed. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment. So this whole world is reserved in fire against the day of what? Judgment. Just read on, Brother Ed. And perdition of ungodly men. Uh, of what kind of men? Ungodly. Ungodly men. Read on. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That's beautiful, isn't it? He wants us to know this first, and then he does not want us to be ignorant of this. He going again. Of this what? One, one thing. Is that what he said? Mm -hmm. Of this? One thing. One thing. Read on. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And we're in the last day. Amen. Right at the very end of it. The clock is getting ready to strike. Six o'clock in the evening. You thought I was going to say midnight, didn't you? No, no, no. I got the most highest time. Because when the day of the most high comes, it's going to be a day of darkness. And dark come before the light. Uh-oh. Are y'all there this morning? Yes, sir. Y'all doing all right? Well, won't y'all say amen then? No. I mean, are you condemned with this wicked world? No. You on your way to living burning hell? You should be excited. Amen. Amen. You should be amen. excited that your eyes are open. Amen. Blessed are your eyes because they see. And blessed are your ears because they hear. You're not children of the light. You're children of the day. Amen. Amen. You should be excited. Amen. 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 That these days are not going to come up on you unaware. Because you don't know what hour with the thief is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Now, if you got some sin in you, I understand. Sit down squirm. Because I'm not only going to hit your knee, I'm going to hit your elbow, your head, and everything else. Hallelujah. 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 This is going to be the truth. Hallelujah. Read on, Brother Ed. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Are not people living like slackness today? Huh? Now, they're not taking his promise serious. Read on, brother. They found what his promise is. As some men count slackness. But he's what? But is long-suffering to usward. That's why I keep telling y'all, you better count the long-suffering of the Most High as your salvation. I'm telling you, many of you better thank the Father right now that he didn't come. Because you ain't ready. You haven't lived your life in holiness. You haven't lived your life in righteousness. You ain't got a lick of peace in your life. You ain't ready. Not for the coming of the most high. And we're so paralyzed by iniquity and sin that even when somebody tells us it's coming, we still don't know what to do about our condition. Amen. See, everybody worrying about the false prophet. I'm, I'm talking to you, Thank the you. people. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You thought we was going to get by and escape, huh? No, sir. No, not in the house of the Most High. <laughs> Judgment must first begin at the house of Yah. Hallelujah. And if it begins at us first, what shall it be? All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Everybody think not the whole world getting judged, and we just going to skip over the whole entire assembly of the church, ain't we? No, uh-uh. No, We're going to put you on point. Thank right. you. Hitman. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 You're going to put it on point right where it belongs. Yes, right. right between the crosshairs. Hey. Oh, right. 
integrity and discipline all the way throughout the squeeze. Hey. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Say amen, bro, Philip. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say amen, jawhead. Amen. 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 <laughs> we got it. Amen. Come on, brother Ed. Not willing that any should perish. Man, that's something. Why you think my voice and other ministers out there, other pastors out there, thunder so loud to warn? Because the Most High is not willing that any should perish. That does not mean that people are not going to perish. Right. He always gives warning before destruction. Yeah. He said he's not going to do anything unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. That's how I know that he wasn't coming. That's right. Yes. That's right. Because we're living holy. Come on. Hey. We're living sanctified. Hey. We're keeping a commandment. 